Welcome everyone to the Prop Challenge, the show where your favorite traders from the Forex, indices, futures and commodity markets come together to show you that they have what it takes to pass a prop firm challenge live right in front of you. You get to see all of the trades that they've taken live so that you can learn from their trading strategy and their methodologies. You also get to see exactly how they would execute in a live type of scenario. Now, I know what you're going to say. There is no hindsight trading. All trades are simulated through FX replay with live data taken from the last two years. A random month is chosen from the last two years by our uh, random wheel chooser thingy device. Anyway, here, here are the rules. Our rules are based on the most popular prop firm parameters. They emulate similar targets and restrictions to your favorite prop firms. Traders must achieve an 8% gain given an unlimited time period to trade, much like most of these prop firms nowadays, starting from a random month, of course. However, they must adhere to strict rules of 4% max daily drawdown and an overall drawdown of 8%. So let's see if your favorite traders are really able to put their money where their mouths are and prove that they have what it takes to take on the prop challenge. Right, everyone, welcome to the prop challenge. We're here with Scott Taylor. He's going to be taking on the challenge today, seeing if he can make that 8% and basically pass a prop firm challenge live in front of you guys. So Scott, welcome, bro. Hey, man. Yeah, looking forward to this. Looking forward to showcasing the strategy and, and seeing if we can pass a challenge in that, uh, in that time period. Right, so your strategy, um, what time frames do you trade on and what pair are you going to be trading it on on this challenge? So the strategy, we use simply two time frames. We use four hour for our directional bias and our 15 minute time frame for entry. So I could get through a number of weeks fairly quickly, although I'm not going to rush it because we make mistakes if we do that. And we want to try and simulate a live market scenario as much as possible, looking for four hour liquidity runs and then the way that the candlesticks form after a buy side or sell side liquidity breach for directional bias. And then I'll say, OK, I'm only looking for buys if this happens or I'm only looking for sells if this happens. And on a 15 minute, we have a very strict tr trade criteria for entry model. So I'll either be looking for a most recent 15 minute fractal sweep an external range fractal sweep or potentially an extended sweep using world price theories and premium versus discount. There's no other indicators involved and no other time frames involved. Right. And then in terms of your management, how are you managing the trades? Is there a fixed risk reward or is there, you know, a dynamic stop loss that's in place? So 99% of the time we're looking for a one to three risk to reward and it's a solid TP or stop loss. We're not moving our stops to break even. We're not taking any partials and we're not scaling out of the positions. So if you're looking to risk 1% on the trade, you're, you're risking that 1% and you're, you're already going into that trade with the mindset that you're happy to lose that. And the max gain will be 3% based on that. So we're looking at, you know, three or four trades to pass 10%, but depending on what the risk to reward is, depending on what the strike rate is and the, and the series of wins and losses and how they come, because that's problem and and obviously random outcomes but we'll see what happens all right awesome well we're gonna hop right into the challenge we're gonna spin the random date wheel now and decide when scott is going to start the challenge from and then we're gonna hop right into it and see if scott has what it takes to pass the prop challenge so good luck bro i'm looking forward to seeing what you do on the charts okay guys hey how's it going and uh, today I'm going to be going over EU on January 2023. So we've got a target of 8% to pass a challenge and 5% for a verification. Let's see if we can do it. Let's see how long it's going to take. Will we get it done in under a month? I don't know. This is only one pair, by the way. And the strategy that I'll be using is the power of two by Evolution Markets, which is two time frames only four hour for trade building and directional bias and 15 minute for entry model. So let's run through where we're we now just use bar replay up to the 30th of December and just zooming out in the four hour at the minute. So this is where we start our analysis. We want to be looking at a couple of things in the four hour before we jump anywhere lower. 
we want to look at where overall market is heading and we can see that the market is pretty bullish when you zoom out um, and that signifies bullish momentum overall but it has been bullish for some time as well you know like the saying goes the trend is your friend absolutely correct and the trend can last for some time like the market has been overall bullish since you would probably argue around nearly a year <laughs> so you know if the market's going to turn around it's going to cost a lot of money for someone to do that but still we don't predict the market we don't try and control the market we just follow price action and what it gives so i'm going to use just some dots here to mark out some really clear swing points starting off with this one here we can see this is a really clear swing high and i'm going to go backwards first before i go forwards because i want to make sure that where we're starting from even this is covering like months before but that builds the picture and the trade idea to for where we are even before the first of january even starts right so that's definitely a a swing high point now where would be the the lowest point before that i'm going to pick this one and i'll explain why because this would be the high before that and if we draw a line which broke that was this point and you can see here this broke but then it wasn't really a pullback and it broke again wasn't really a pullback so it's just extending that swing and now that we have three these three points if we go from that previous high to this one and a good tip is to literally draw it just swing it round like this from that point to that point which is the lowest point the lowest point is this one here which is exactly why i marked that as my swing low then we can trail back and see there's pretty obvious defined low here so we'll pop that down there and now we've got two high highs and two higher lows for me that's enough to confirm a trend and we've already gone back and seen that it was bullish for some time yeah there might have been some short-term shifts but overall market has been pushing to the upside so similar to like i did here just to mark out where the swing high is i'm just going to put a line across here and this is a pretty wide range so that's actually still the low why am i not considering any lows in here because this high is not yet broken so this is a higher high there's not a high high after that it's not broken so there's no there's no higher low you can't have a higher low without a high high it just it's impossible this is all internal so now the second thing we do on the four hour is work out what our immediate directional bias is and this is based on four hour fractals so we have fractals and we have market sessions market sessions you'll see on the 15 minute fractals we use both on the four hour and the 15 minute for interaction points and more immediate market turnaround areas reversals continuations based on the candle formations around the fractals so i'm going to start on the left again because that's the best way to begin just some kind of defined area we can see like a breaker structure is a good area to start so starting with the low up to that most recent fractal high and we can see that that high was breached and every time it's breached we follow the high up and we trail the low to the most recent fractal and we can see the low was breached then shortly after the high was breached so this is what we're doing we're starting from left to right i mentioned it on videos on my channel before it's best not to just stick a, a range on current price because you could actually get it wrong sometimes by doing that so it's best to just do some due diligence spend another 30 to 60 seconds going from left to right just to make sure you got this right so that would have been the range it broke the low when it breaks the low it creates a new fractal high and we'll just keep going because the switch happens quite a few times new high in here drag it along again a new high new low eventually a new high we're getting there most recent low push this along a new high again drag it to the most recent low a new low this time And now we're pushing higher one more time 
and to the most recent low. So of course you could have just stuck that in in the first place, but trust me, they won't always be accurate. Sometimes like our swing range, sometimes the four hour dealing range is also much larger than you think and price action that you're looking at previous externally is actually internal. It's not always the case like this. So now we've got our swing range, we've got momentum to the upside, which can give us a thought process to what counter play moves are we going to deem as higher probability, medium probability and lower probability. And that can affect your strike rate. So the next thing we want to do for our four hour directional bias is pick the most recent interaction, which was this previous range high. It would have been the previous range lower if we pushed lower, but we didn't, we pushed higher. So we mark this with a line, I'll zoom in. And based on how the candles close is how we're going to interact with this. So an initial wick is no follow through, it's a reversal. We'll be looking for sells. This is still December, by the way. The next one then breaches the high, so it invalidates that no follow through. And a one single body close in either direction is unconfirmed because we have a two candle rule. We've been doing this for years. So we're waiting for another candle. We want that second candle to confirm and it'd either be bullish for follow through or bearish for no follow through. So we've now got no follow through. So I'm gonna mark that as I think we're very soon gonna push into the 1st of December. Just push it one more candle forwards and we'll see what we've got. Are we heading into December, uh, sorry, January? Yes, we are. Okay, 30th, 30th of December, which by the looks of it is a Friday because it pushes over to the 2nd of January. We've definitely still got no follow through because it's contained within this range. Bullish candle followed by bearish candle, no follow through, we'll wait for the next candle to drop. So what that means is overall momentum means that if we get any counter plays to the upside, we're happy to take that because momentum is bullish, momentum's to the upside. But we always want to be trading pro-directional bias. You can see how large this swing range is. It's not always that large, but it is very large and how small the current four hour dealing range is. And if we're trading off a even smaller range on the 15 minute, we can be in and out relatively quickly within a few hours typically. So we wanna be trading pro directional bias based on the interactions, which is no follow through. So we're looking for sells in premium, but we will consider buyers in discount because overall momentum is to the upside, multiple high highs and higher lows. So, go to the 15 minute. And you can see we've got the kill zones on here. So we've got London. I'll be looking for a fractal sweep to take this short, but it has to be inside a kill zone. London's finished, nothing there. This red zone in the middle, these three lines, that is our no trade zone. So we've got a 0.45%, 0.55%, anything in between that zone, that 10% zone, is no trade zone. This is well-priced theories that we came up with earlier this year. So it's basically refinement on premium and discount to avoid taking too many trades close to the EQ, the midline of a four-hour range, where price tends to, like you can see, accumulate. And you can easily be tagged in and out of trades. Sometimes they play out, but often they don't. So you might get a sweep in premium, for example, but if the entry's in the no trade zone, we won't take it. So we're pushing lower. We're still in that no trade zone here. And you can see here, if we mark where our 15 minute range would have been at the time, or we start from left to right, So we didn't sweep the external range until outside of kill zone. And the second entry model is a most recent internal fractal sweep, which would have been this one, which yes, happened in New York kill zone, but it happened in the EQ, right on the EQ in the no trade zone. So there's no trades that day, not interested. Play it forward to Asia. Let's see what happens the next day. Pushing close to London. Here we go. So we're gonna rearrange the 15 minutes uh, external range. We 
which you would do every morning. And like I say, it's best to do this and get it right than rush it and get it wrong. Just follow it every time it breaches a new high or low. So the high is not breached. And the low is not breached until just before London. You can see down here that sweep of the external range before kill zone. So we're not looking to trade off of that. Most recent fractal high here. Drag that across. We're still contained within this four hour range. We've not breached the high or low yet. And it takes the low of the range and it takes the low of the four hour range. So what we do in this case is we come out and we wait for further confirmation. Look at that. So we probably had some news there actually. So what we're doing now is we're moving our four hour dealing range down to current price, let's push the lows, and we're dragging our high to the most recent fractal. We're marking out where the previous interaction point was, which is here, and we have one candle, so we are unconfirmed bias. We need to wait for one more candle. Still contained within this bullish swing range, so we're still bullish in terms of momentum overall. Next candle closes bullish, so we get no follow through. So momentum's to the upside and directional bias is also bullish. So don't let these one candles, this volatility put you off, which a lot of time is news induced anyway. This is the important thing, looking at the markets based on how it looks versus what's on your trade plan. Always go off your trade plan, even if something looks, oh, that looks bearish. It shouldn't stop you from taking buys if that meets all your bullish trade idea criteria. So what we got next? Because of this large push and because we've got a long way to go to get back into above this previous fractal low and this no follow through could easily become follow through just by having one more bearish candle close anywhere between current price and the low of this fractal. I'm going to play this forward on the four hour just to see what happens here. And for that exact reason, I could have been on the 15 minute looking, but sometimes you just want to wait on the four hour. We've had now a second bearish close below that fractal. So this is no longer no follow through or a reversal to the upside. This is now follow through confirmed to the downside. What does that mean? So we're looking for pro directional bias sells in premium. But because momentum is to the upside, we can counter follow through and buy in discount. And that four hour filter will filter out the times where we can and cannot do that. So let's go down to the 15 minute. Now that we've got that bias. And that was confirmed after these two sessions, which we did not trade because that would have been unconfirmed at that point. Let's move our 15 minute range, follow that as it would have naturally occurred. Would have moved over to here. And then play it forward to Asia, see what happens. It may even take the low. We might have to adjust our four hour range. Play it forward till the next day. And we've got London open, which by the way is 7.30 UK time. And we'll trade till 10 a.m. New York is for extended sessions 1 p.m. UK time until 3.30. Okay, so let's move our external range up on the 15 minute. Entry model here is sweep of a fractal external range on the 15 minute in the desired area of premium discount, factoring in well price theories, no trade zone, or a most recent internal fractal as well. And we do have an extended sweep entry, and if we come across that, I'll explain and show, but we don't know if we're gonna get that yet. So we can look for sales in premium, follow through to the downside. We can also look for counter follow through buys in discount because we're following bullish momentum. We do have some news, some PMI red folder news and FOMC later that evening, so we wanna factor that in. No fractal sweeps. 
It's just extending that 15 minute range. Outside of kill zone now. Wait for New York. Still contained within the same external range. Now here's a good example of an internal fractal sweep. See, it's the most recent fractal to current price. It's internal of the range. It's a valid setup. However, where would the entry be? The entry would be on the candle which swept, even with stop loss coverage, but your entry is in the no trade zone. You'd also want a three to one to the low, which you do not get. So there's two reasons why that trade's invalid. So we carry on. Outside of session, play it forward through Asia. Still contained within our 15 minute external range. Still contained within the four hour dealing range. And you can see price just accumulating around this no trade zone, this EQ, the four hour range. So do you really want to be in and out of trades over and over again here? You really don't, trust me. Some will win, don't get me wrong, but you'll have a lower strike rate over a large enough sample size. Okay. So make sure we got our 15 minute range correct here. So our external 15 minute range can very easily remain for a few days. And this is the thing with like bar replay, you've got to be really careful you don't miss details. So we've had a very similar setup to the previous day. Internal of 15 minute range. Most recent fractal inside session, this time London. The first candle that swept actually, I've played one candle too fast, but we don't know if it'll play out anyway. The candle which swept, as long as that high doesn't get taken, which it doesn't look like it has. 290, 289, so this is still valid. And if we use stop loss coverage on this, what do I mean by that? So for EU, typically for our stop loss, whatever it is to the high, so that's 10.8, you'd round up to a full number, so you'd round it up to 11 pips, and then you want between one and two pips as a buffer. So that would be probably max 13, right? Which would be around here. But if there is some added protection very close by, it's wise to use it. So I'm gonna stick my stop loss just above here, just above the external range in case it wants to come and take this liquidity here. The maximum stop loss size for EU is 20 pips. This is like just under 17. And it still allows me to get a three to one before the four hour range low, which is down here. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so we know we're tagged in with the following candle anyway, uh, outside of session. Now, if we get another cell set up on EU, while this cell is still active, I won't be taking it because that's doubling my risk exposure. I'm not taking partials, I'm not moving my stop loss to break even. So, if that were to happen, we'd be looking at 2% on one trade idea, which is not a good idea. And that's hit TP during New York anyway. So yeah, nice trade. So we've got 3%. It was a internal range suite, London session, stop loss coverage. It was well priced. You know, it was ticking all the boxes. And what was the directional bias? Follow through, so it's pro-directional bias. Literally, textbook, power of two evolution trade. So it's taken the range low. So what can we do in this 
case here. The fact that it's taken this low inside New York and we can look for counter follow through buys in discount. We're well priced, we're away from the EQ. Why can we look for buys? Because momentum has been to the upside overall. This is an extended sweep because the candle which swept is this one. Pretty large candle anyway. You would have over 20 pip stop loss, so you wouldn't trade that either, but it does create a lower low. Inside the session, that's an extended sweep. So we can take this one, assuming it's under 20 pip stop loss. Yes, so it'd be 13, so round up to 14 and give up to two. So I'd give it a 16 pip stop loss. Again, it'd be three to one. And we'll just drag this in. We'll move our 15 minute range in a moment. So it's a tag in and a quick tag out. So we get a minus one. Minus 1%. This was a counter move, which always holds a slightly lower strike rate, increased risk. However, it was medium risk because we were, okay, counter directional bias, which is to the downside short term, but it was pro momentum to the upside. So it wasn't low probability, it was medium probability. Um, it was an external range sweep, it was well priced. So it's a good valid setup. Right, let's drag this range lower. There's our 15 minute range now here. By the way, the extended sweep, you can't take another one because we've got an inside bar in here. You see we get a lower low that sweeps, a lower low the entry candle, this next one that tags in does not form a lower low. So an inside bar invalidates not the trade before, but any further sweeps directly afterwards. Okay, and goes on and takes the four hour low. Let me just mark these. Just on the 15 minute. That's better. Right, so a wick interaction initially is no follow through. Let's just play this forwards. Still a wick, body's not closed. Bullish candle, still no follow through. And then it breaches a new fractal. So that was very short lived. So we did have this trade idea, which was overnight anyway. We've just finished the session, so that's all happening during Asia. That would have been no follow through, but we're not trading, we're sleeping, most of us. And then we push lower and we have a new fractal here. So that's our new interaction point. Is it a body close? Yes, it is. So it's unconfirmed. We want one more candle. Okay. Two consecutive bodies is strong follow through. Strong follow through indicates a higher likeliness of more momentum in that same direction. If we get two consecutive bodies, without a initial wick close first. So it's body body, right? It can't be wick body body, and it can't be bearish bullish bearish, or bullish bearish bullish. That would be follow through. That's the different criteria between the two. That's a common question asked. So if we've now got strong follow through to the downside, we no longer need to wait for premium pricing to sell. We can sell immediately. So let's jump down to the 15 minute. get our 15 minute range correct. You can see it's pretty obviously producing lower lows. London session, waiting for New York now. Let's just jump back to the four hour. You see that's pushed lower. 
but it doesn't matter that we've now got this bullish candle because we've still got strong follow through. We've not interacted with any new fractals. You can see that price pushes higher. So that's the way trading view is, right? But I'm just going to pretend I didn't see that. So, breaks the low and then breaks the high. It's a very large candle, not looking to trade off of that. Let's just go back to how this was. Okay, breaks the low first. Therefore, this is the high and the low. So we're not sweeping any highs here because current price is the high. See, it swept the fractal low first. And that one candle was the high and the low in itself. And price just pushes higher. Okay, what have we got here? So, remember it's strong follow through to the downside, so we can sell anywhere. It also means that if we get a sweep anywhere in the range, it doesn't have to be in premium pricing for strong follow through, we can take trades based on this. So if this is the candle which swept that fractal, which is obviously very large, you can see that we have an extension on this because it creates a high high. Just out of interest, can we get less than a 20 pip stop loss on this? No, it's like 33, probably 35 by the time we got involved. So that invalidates the trade. And then by the time we get a decent sized extended tweet, we're outside of session. So we'll play that forwards and takes the four hour high. Okay, now we can see we've got strong follow through to the opposite direction, two consecutive body closers. Remove our four hour range. Where was the previous interaction point? It was here. Strong follow through. So now we've got overall momentum being market trending to the upside and strong follow through bullish to the upside as well. So even though this is high probability looking for buys, doesn't necessarily mean it's going to play out. It's just stacking the confluences in alignment with your trade plan. And that's the important thing here. So we can look for buys anywhere. Are we heading into Asia? Yes, we are. So we're overnight now anyway. So let's just push this forwards. Just extending the high. No new interactions with fractals. Okay, I've probably sped this forward a bit too much, but we'll go back. It's just extending that range, that four hour range. We're still strong follow through to the upside. Apologies, skip that forward a bit faster than I expected to. But anyway, we'll run through this. I can see there's potentially something in, inside here. So we've got Asia here anyway, right? So let's just move our external range right up to London Open, which would have been here. So. London Open range. is here. We're not going to take counter strong follow through cells. Why would we not do that? Because it's lower probability. Why is it lower probability? Because based on our four hour momentum filter, momentum is to the upside. So why would we counter trend cell? That would make it higher risk. Okay. So we're not only looking for sweeps at the high here, we're only going to be looking for new sweeps at the lows, which we get. But there's something interesting to cover here. Let's just push this up. So we've got our low and our high. Now, is this an entry? Yes, it is, because it sweeps the external range. 
Yes, it's in premium, but it's strong follow through. So we can do that. 17, so give it two more, 19. Even if you wanted to give it a 20 pip stop loss, that's fine. Then it does reach a three to one before the range high. In fact, we wouldn't have a range high because it's just extending. So that would just extend the range and that's absolutely fine. However, the one thing that's missing here is it doesn't tag inside kill zone. It tags around 11 a.m. So this one would be individual. You know, if I were to be trading this and there's no high impact news at all, the trade setup would be there. I would place the order around 9.45, right? And then I'd be off doing other things. I'd be in the Discord answering questions or going and making coffee, whatever I need to do, right, for the day. Uh, Killzone would finish and I wouldn't have been tagged in. So I wouldn't have had an alert to say I'm tagged into the trade. But similarly, what I do do is I will put an alert on the low of the candle because if that were to be breached, that would invalidate the trade. And as I wouldn't have had the alert to invalidate the trade, I would have kept my order on. So yeah, some may argue that technically it's out of kill zone as a tag, but ask yourself the question, if the trade has not created a lower low and it's not invalidated the sweep, and you already had your order on, would you cancel the order? I've got to leave that to you. I'm going to remove that and say that we didn't take that for, for the purpose of the video and, and keep it as strict validity on the trades as possible. But that's just something to kind of bear in mind. So yeah, no trade there. And then no sweeps during New York either. Move our 15 minute range up and we'll come back to the four hour and we'll play that forward. And you can see here, we've also breached the external swing high and it's just solidified even more that overall momentum is to the upside and now that it's created a higher high what did I say at the start of the video you draw from the previous high swing it all the way around to the current price where's the lowest point down here so that's our swing low so that is old news this is now our new swing low and this is now our new swing high. I won't draw a line on there because it might just extend out to keep moving lines. So still got strong follow through here. We've got a new fractal high formed now. So that would mean that we want to get a three to one or a minimum two to one on strong follow through before that fractal high. If we're looking for buy trades. So let's fast forward to London. Okay, we got an internal sweep, internal most recent, but that's to the downside. Remember, momentum's to the upside, so we are not counter strong follow through. We're not looking for counter sells because momentum's to the upside. If momentum was to the downside and we had strong follow through bullish, we would counter trend sell that because that would be medium probability. But this would be low probability, so we're not taking that, even if it plays out. Don't care. We will, however, look for buys. So more sweeps to the highs there. I'm not looking to trade that outside a session. Wait for New York. Let's extend this. New most recent internal. Would set an alert on there. The alert gets hit. And we're inside New York. We're very close to the range low anyway. Not that it means anything, but if we're going to use stop loss coverage, we're probably going to have our typical two pip buffer anyway. So what would this be? Eight, so we'll probably give it 11. Can we get a, th a minimum two to one to the high? We can get a three to one to the high with 11 pip stop loss. So we'll place that on there. Tagged in, 
and a three to one. Lovely, strong follow through. Perfect example of a strong follow through, pro directional bias, pro momentum trade. That four hour filter doing its thing, looking at an internal range sweep. So we've got a 3% internal range, strong follow through, pro momentum. Um, we don't factor in premium versus discount. We don't factor in well price theories on strong follow through, but that was a nice trade. Awesome. So I believe we are up 5% at the minute. Got two wins and a loss, right? Yeah. So we're chilling. And it's now the 10th of January, 10 days in. Not looking for sales. And you can see here, okay, it sweeps an internal, most recent internal. However, outside of session, not looking to trade that. Move it forward through Asia. Let's wait till London. We're still inside this external range on the 15 minute. Okay, London sweeps the high, we're not looking for sales. No fractal low to be swept yet. If we trail it back to the most recent internal fractal low, we've got this. So we've got the same exact setup. Still strong follow through. Internal still inside this external range. This would be around up to 11, 12, 13 pip stop loss to give it two pip buffer. Now, can we get ideally a three to one, but a minimum two to one to the high? No, we can't. We can't even get a two to one, so we're not trading that. Even if that plays out, we've got a fractal high here now, so we've got to be in and out before that happens. Wait for uh, New York. And takes the high. So nice. You'll notice that the four hour momentum filter has saved us from potentially one, maybe two, potentially three, three losses in there, saved three losses and just taken one winner. So that's a big, that's a 6% gap. You're either 3% down or you're 3% up. That's pretty decent. That's the four hour. So we're ex extending that bullish momentum. Our four hour dealing range is now way smaller. So probably less like to, likely to get opportunity with small ranges, but we'll see. You can never say anything for certain. We've got a wick, so we've got no follow through. So we can look for cells in this situation. Just play this forward a bit, make sure we're, there we go. Move our 15 minute range. Let's just extend this over. So no follow through means that we can look for sells pro-directional bias in premium must be well-priced. Momentum being bullish means that if we're well-priced and in discount, we can look for buys. So this is all internal and we don't have any internal fractals. Now we do, but that's outside a session. Um, okay, 
Didn't realise that was the second. The day over already. Looking for Asia. Okay. Same four hour range. Okay, we're now in London. We've still got no follow through to the downside. Same 15 minute range, same four hour range. We have a nice fractal high here, whether we could take that. That'd be a nice short, I'd stick an alert on that line. Ooh, nice. Okay, that candle's quite large. In terms of stop loss, you'd have 15 pips, but you can't get a three to one to the low. Not even a two, right? So I'd avoid that. Next candle is smaller. It creates a higher high, so it's an extended sweep. 10, so we could get in with a 12, which is also some stop loss coverage. Can we get a three to one? Just. Literally just getting it with a 12 pip stop loss. 12 and a half pip. So we'll play this through. Tag just on the edge of kill zone there. Okay, look, we've got news here. Okay, inflation rates. Didn't see that, would not trade that. There are certain high impact news release and not all red folder news will I hold off from trading, but this is definitely, you've got FOMC, you've got NFP, you've got core CPI, core inflation rates, core PMI. They're the ones that you need to avoid because certain prop firms like FTMO, they will just ban you from your account if you trade it. So my bad, didn't see it, wouldn't take it. Or if I was in it, let's say I was in it because the tag was, 10 a.m. So we would have had like three hours until the news hit. So you could probably get out around break even, right? Probably at best break even. You may as well just save and take it in the first place. In that case, I'm not gonna have it in the rules as that I took a break even. I definitely wouldn't have taken that trade as a loss in the real life market because during that three hour period, you'd be focused on what's the news that day rather than presenting for a video. So yeah, let's, let's invalidate that. And we know that it took the high. So no trades in there. 15 minute range, go out to the four hour. We've got a new four hour fractal sweep. Yes, we have. And this swing high is just extending. There's no real defined highs and lows in here to me as in, in terms of swing structure. Most recent fractal interaction is one candle so far, so we need a second candle. And we get a second consecutive body close, so we've got a strong follow through again. Back to the 15 minute. Okay, we've got to play this forward a little bit. Just help it catch up with the four hour. Right. Four hour range, 15 minute range. Drag that over. This is where we're at. So. Let's play Asia forward to London. We'll move that 15 minute range shortly as well because that did breach the high. Then to the low, down here. Strong follow through to the upside, momentum's to the upside. So remember we're not looking for counter sells. So I don't care that it sweeps the high, I'm not looking to sell. So we just extend that up would only sell in a pro-directional buy situation if momentum is to the upside. Outside of session, wait for New York. 15 minute external range is now down here. 
tightens up. No trade zone, not looking to take that. That sweep happened right in the EQ, that no trade zone. Not interested. Filter those out. Follow that 15 minute range and outside of session. No sweeps valid to the downside for buys and it takes the four hour high after that. So we'll just move that 15 minute range up. I know we've got to play Asia forward anyway. Let's go out to the four hour. Okay, new four hour range. Most recent fractal low. Previous interaction point was bullish and bearish. No follow through. Okay, 15 minute. Now we're into London. So we can look for sales now because we're pro directional bias, no follow through, which is a reversal from the upside. And we can counter no follow through, look for buys in discount. Now the sweep happened way up there. In fact, that sweep would have been, still wouldn't have been valid, but it would have been here. That was a previous range. Let's just be really careful with this. It's very close. In fact, the sweep of the external range here is just in discount. Then we get a lower low, a lower low, a lower low, and another lower low. So this is valid, this candle here. And I've played forward a few more candles. But this is a valid buy. Round up to eight, give it two more, so 10. Three to one, we can get that pretty easily. We're just letting probabilities play out. We know we're tagged into the trade. We don't know if it's gonna play out, of course. We've got New York here. Not looking to scale into the position if we're already live. And we've got Asia now, let's just play that forward. Just moving sideways, no break-evens for this reason. No high impact news. Real teaser of a trade, but <laughs> we managed to get to uh, three to one TP eventually. Real teaser of a trade. Very rare to hold a trade over overnight at all, but for that period of time is quite uncommon. So this is 3%. This was a counter no follow through trade. So it was counter directional bias, but it was pro momentum. It was an extended sweep. It was well priced and in a discount. That's why you have to really take your time because even though it's very close to that no trade zone, it is technically in discount, it's away from that. So that was nice. So let's just tally up now. We've got to the 17th of January and we are three, six, five, six, seven, eight. So we've passed the 8% target on the challenge. We'd be sitting on hands and waiting for the verification account to come through. And yeah, challenge is passed, right? 17 days, one pair EU. Uh, we covered 15 minute external range sweeps. We covered internal most recent fractal sweeps and we covered extended sweeps. We talked about the four hour momentum and how that's filtering out the higher, the medium, the lower probability counter move trades. We covered how we're building the trade idea and the directional bias based on the four hour zooming out the overall trend and momentum and then zooming into the four hour dealing range and how those fractal interactions give us our directional bias for that moment. Um, yeah, thanks for watching and um, I hope you took some value from that. Let me know in the comments.